Hello everybody, my name is Joey Williamson and tonight I want to talk to you about a rather sensitive subject for me. Um, since I've been back from my surgery almost four months ago now, um, a lot of people ask me how I got through it, how I came out of it so well. Um, getting compliments all over the place about how, you know, good I look, and not saying I'm a pretty boy, but, um, just as how healthy I look and how in shape I look since my surgery. Um, as most of you know, I had my open heart surgery on February 12th, um, 2014. And I gotta tell you, um, on the uh, night before, I didn't sleep that night. I was mainly on my knees in my living room praying to God that I would make it through this. Um, that morning when I got to Meyer Heart Center in Grand Rapids, Michigan, which is part of a Spectrum Health organization, yeah, I was, I was pretty calm for the most part. I wasn't really freaking out at first, but um, about thirty minutes, twenty thirty minutes before my surgery, that's when I really started freaking. Um, really started getting upset, and um, didn't know if I still wanted to go through with it or not. I questioned it a lot about um, a week before my surgery just because of all the details I had gotten um, about the surgery itself and what could happen. Um, it gave me some medicine to help me calm down. Apparently I was acting like a goofy mother, you know what, mofo. Um, and uh, apparently one of the last things I said before I went into surgery was my name is Hollywood Joe and you better not forget it and I apparently made everybody in the room laugh because I was so drugged up and goofy uh, but I really truly believe that wasn't like me speaking it was God speaking through me to who I am as a person to who I am as a goofy character and life that I've been. Um, I think there was a reason for that. Now, I was told the surgery was supposed to be three and a half hours long. Um, you know, supposed to be in and out, replace the conduit, which is what they're called. And for those of you that don't understand what a conduit is, the conduit goes in place of the valve, the missing valve, and helps the blood flow um, more more properly, normal, as uh, um, you know some might say. Last thing I remember was at about 7:45 a.m. The first thing I remember was looking up at the clock. And seeing that it was almost 7 p.m. at night. I didn't get a lot of details about my surgery at first. Uh, because I don't think the nurses, doctors, nor my family wanted to freak me out. But, um... The surgery almost took eight hours that day. Um... The scar tissue was very, very built up from the previous two open heart surgeries I've had. Um, apparently it got so bad that the scar tissue was like attached, was attached to my sternum. And the sternum was the focal point of the damage that they had to do when they split me open. Um, that was number one. Number two, um, the conduit. In most cases when 
you know, surgeons pull the old conduits out, replace the new one. The, the old conduit is somewhat in decent shape, might be a little worn out and faded and narrow. Um, my conduit came out in pieces and it was crumbling in my nurse's hand. Um, now I've been told by a few people if I would have waited maybe three to six months more that I was going to be on a path that who knows if I would have came back from it or not. Um, I can tell you that the last three months leading up to my surgery were probably the worst three months of my life because I felt like I couldn't do anything or I felt like if I did too much, I was just going to, like, not be right with my body. Um, third thing is, I did lose a lot of blood. I mean, obviously, of course, in most reoperations, you have to have a blood transfusion, which I did. Um, apparently, when they were stitching me up every time... They would try to stitch me up in a new place. I was started, started bleeding profusely. Um, they were worried that when they split me, when they sewed me back up, that they'd have to reopen me because they were so worried about blood clots surrounding my heart, which would have been very, very devastating, obviously. And. Somehow, through those three major things, I was up walking halls, I was up moving around 36 hours later, within 36 hours later. Um, you know, I don't want people to feel sorry for me. I don't want people to pity me. Uh... I want people to understand something. Uh, this is not something that's easy to go through. It's not easy on the person that goes through it. It's not easy on the family or friends or any other loved ones out there to have to just when they have to sit and wait to see what's going to happen. You know, I had a few friends, and I know they were well intentioned. When they said it that, well, you've been through it before, so it will, it, this should be easy. Um, I can tell you from talking to people close to me that have known me my entire life, this was the hardest surgery I've been through. Um, you know, it's, it's by the grace of God that he allowed me to heal and come back the way he did. Because I got lucky. It wasn't my luck. But it was God's blessings. That he poured on me. To. Come through everything that I did. Okay. And coming out of this better than ever. And for the longest time. I felt like I was alone in all this. I didn't have a group of people. That could understand. What I've gone through. But. You know, since the surgery, I've connected with a group called Mended Little Hearts of West Michigan. It's part of even even a bigger organization just called Mended Little Hearts. And it's, it's, a, it's a group, support group, support group um, for parents with heart defects or even now with adults with heart defects, like parents with children. That have heart defects, I should say. Um, I can tell you, being a part of that group has made me feel so much better. Um, just being able to be there for people and sharing in struggles, sharing in like glories and accomplishments with them. Um, I'm, I'm just going to suggest to any of you, if you have a friend or family member that has a heart defect, Tell them to join up. 
with uh, mended little hearts. Um, and even yourself join the support group. Uh, it's an amazing thing. Um, but I will say this. I, I'm very blessed. I'm very grateful. Um, that God spared me through what could have been worse. Um, I, it's, it's humbled me. There's no doubt about that. It's humbled me to my very foundation and core. Um, but, you know, everybody, when everybody looks at, you know, February 12th, when they see me, they think of the greatest struggle and the greatest fight for my life that I ever had been through. And, you know, part of that's true. But now when I look at February 12th, I look at the greatest victory the greatest obstacle overcome, the greatest milestone I've accomplished to get through all of that and to be able to say that I survived once again. Like I said, this was the hardest surgery I've ever been through and I thank God for giving me the strength to get through it. You know, I'm grateful for my family, my friends, um, people around me that love and support me and care about me. Grateful for it all. But I will say this. Nobody should ever have to go through what I went through to be in a better place now. Um, man, I just... It's kind of hard to relive it all because... Like I said, there was so much pain, um, so much agony at first. But like I said, you know, I sit here four months later, and I'm a totally different man than I once was. And I have God, God the Father above, to thank for. So, you know, if you ever see anybody... Or if you know of anybody that ever has to go through surgery. It doesn't matter if it's open heart surgery. You know, back surgery. Neck surgery. Leg surgery. Arm. Whatever surgery might be. Don't ever take it lightly. And don't ever think what they're going through is an easy thing. Because it's, it's the biggest fight. The biggest struggle. And the biggest obstacle anyone ever has to overcome. And... Um, you know, I just, I had, to, I had to, I had to share my thoughts on this because it's been kind of bottled up for a long time now and people keep asking me, oh, how, well, you know, what happened during surgery? How did it all go? Um, you know, stuff like that. And this is my opportunity just to share with everybody. So, um. I hope, hope people understand, not, you know, like I said, I hope you understand that this is not something that's easy to go through, something that's, you know, a walk in the park. And I want people to understand that, not just, not just for my benefit, but for other people's benefits as well. For, you know, people, if you know somebody with a heart defect, if you know somebody with an illness or broken, um, broken body part that needs fixing, it's not a walk in the park. It is hell. Sometimes it can be days of hell. Sometimes it can be weeks of hell. Sometimes it can be months of hell. And unfortunately, sometimes it can even be years of hell. But, be there for people that have to go through this hell. And support them and love them, and care about them, and don't take them for granted. Because I'm lucky. I'm one of the lucky ones that have survived all this. Some people don't survive. And I was very blessed, very lucky, very, you know, very, 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 very lucky. I know, I know there is no luck when it comes to God, but... I don't know. I think God gave me some luck, I should say. So, 
Um, enough about that ramble and rant. Um, not trying to bring the mood down. I just want everybody to understand that people struggle every day with health um, and surgeries and recovery and illness and it's not easy. And you should rejoice for the ones that survive and come back better than ever. And you should pray for the ones that continue to struggle. So with that being said, my name is Joey Williamson, and I am a child of God, and I am not perfect.